Hey everybody and welcome back to the latest video. <laughs> Luna's rejoined us, I know a few of you asked where she was in the last video. So last video she was on a walk, oh and she's off again, um, but yeah she's back causing chaos. This video is going to be about flats and how to calculate the target ADU, um, a little bit on how to or how I shoot flats different programs and how they scale different cameras differently and also how to work out things like the bit depth of your camera and just general stuff about flats. It might all go horribly wrong so if that's the case let me know in the comments and I'll either won't do it again <laughs> or I'll see what I can do. So let's get into the video. If you like what you see don't forget to hit like subscribe and the bell so to start with what is the most important information you can know about your camera sensor well that's the what bit it is so if you go to your camera's manufacturer's website or the page that describes it it might say 12 bit 14 bit or 16 bit it may even say 10 bit but generally these are the most common ones I've seen lately you could also go to sharp cap and if you remember doing the sensor analysis Remember if you gave out the information um, at the end with the table, it gives you the information you need right here. So once you know what kind of bit camera your sensor has, there's some really easy maths to do to find out what you need. So I'm just going to show you here sort of 10 bit. 12 bit, 14 bit, and 16 bit. And what I'm going to show you now is the kind of like ADU range your camera can cover. So for 10 bit, the formula is 2 to the power sorry, of 10. For 12, it's 2 to the power of 12. See, we're sensing a bit of a theme here. 2 to the power of 14. And 2 to the power of 16. So let's quickly do those calculations. Keep rubbing it out with my hand. So it's 1024. 40. 9, 6, 16, 3, 8, 4, and 65, 5, 3, 6. So we're going from 0 to 1, 8, 2, 4, 0 to 4, 9, 6, 0 to 16, and 0 to 65, 5, 3, 6. This is kind of like an important demonstration of why you should always shoot in the highest bit depth you can get as well. So some programs such as like SharpCap, it gives you um, in the capture mode, it gives you options of what to, to shoot in. So for example, it might say RAW 12 or RAW 14 or RAW 8 or RAW 16. Always shoot in the highest option that you've got. And I don't mean like when it says RGB 24 or anything like that. I mean RAW 12 or RAW 14 or RAW 16. Because you can see, if you're not shooting in the highest you know, option you've got, you're missing out on all this range. So the next important piece of information before we actually get on to sort of target ADUs, etc. Is, does your program... So, for example, sharp cap, APT, 
SG Pro, dot, 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 etc. Scale from the native bit depth all the way to 16 bit. So, for example, 12 bit to 16, 14 bit. etc. This is important to know because depending on whether it scales to 16 bit or not, whether it depends on what values you're going to be shooting for. Sharp cap can be confusing for example because if we look at the histogram, so I've just pointed it at the window, that's why the peaks look a bit strange. You can see as we hover over the histogram it gives us a few values. So even though we're shooting in RAW 12, the top value that it gives us is stretched to 16 bit. So for example, if I go to like really low, it's 0 to 65,000 and I can't quite get it up to 100% before it goes off the screen. Whereas if we go to the third line down on those details, it gives us the true ADU. So for this sense it is 12 bit, so it's 0 to 4096. But once again it goes off just before the end. So you can see how confusion might arise. So if you're aiming for, so for example, I've seen it happen a few times where they, a person has been told for a 12-bit camera or for any camera to aim for 20 thousand ADU. So that's fine for a 16-bit camera or any other bit camera that's been scaled to 16-bit. problem arises when for example in sharp cap if you then try and aim that true ADU because it is literally the only thing in that box of information that says mentions anything about ADU to 20,000 if you try and aim the true ADU for 20,000 on a 12-bit or 14-bit camera which are only possible of 0 to 4096 and 0 to 16384 you will end up with white flats completely overexposed and useless However, if it's a 16-bit camera, that 20,000 is absolute fine. In sharp cap, the top line where it says value, you can aim that for 20,000, but it must never be the true ADU on a 12-bit or 14-bit camera or a lower bit. You might be thinking, how do I know if my other programs, such as APT, are scaling up to 16-bit? Well, you can find this out pretty easily by going to Tools, then Histogram. A histogram will pop up, but it will also give you a range on there.
depending on what it tells you, the ranges, you can figure out whether it's scaling up to 16 bit. Once you've figured out whether your program is scaling or not, you then know what range you're playing with. So I'm going to work it for a 12 bit camera. And you can literally make yourself a table of the ranges of illumination that you might want. So ADU goes from 0 to 4096. Now personally, I always aim for 50% illuminated. Which means it's practically 4096 times 0.5. equals 2047 or thereabouts. So in APT or in sharp cap, I always aim for approximately 2000 ADU. Drew ADU equals approximately 2000. So my 294, which is a 14 bit camera, I always aim for approximately 8000 ADU. And these values have worked pretty well for me. So if, you were, if I was using a 16-bit camera or if my values were being scaled, 20,000 ADU would give me around 33% illuminated, which is fine. Like, that, that would work. As long as the histogram or the data wasn't clipped to either side, that's fine. Um, but I might be tempted to aim for something like 32,000 ADU, which would be around 50% illuminated. So if somebody's ever told you aim for 20,000 ADU and you've done it blindly and your flats are not working, this might be why. And hopefully you now know how to work out what ADU you're looking for or whether you, your capture program is scaling it up or, you know, all those little things that people don't actually tell you straight off. That's the next question. How many flats? Well, basically, the more the better. I wouldn't shoot, I wouldn't stack anything with less than 30 flats, but really, that's because I'm lazy and I should be shooting like 50 plus. So, if you want to know how many flats you need to shoot, 50 plus, you should be good. That should make a decent master flat. Another question I get asked all the time is, how do you shoot your flats? I literally stick an iPad on the end of my telescope. No t-shirt, no nothing. Um, I tend not to use sky flats here in the UK because we get cloud more often than not and the illumination is constantly changing. So I use my iPad straight on the end of the telescope and I can control the brightness really easily and wow, I just whack off like 30 to 50 straight away. Some people will be like, why aren't you using a white t-shirt? Because, well, I found that when I've used a white t-shirt, it has introduced nothing but awful gradients into my images. And if you're getting strange gradients, just try it without the t-shirt. Just try it, see if it works. If it works, great. If it doesn't, go back to using the t-shirt. But for me, Eliminating a tightened t-shirt over my imaging train literally got rid of flats problems for me. So 
that is why I don't use a t-shirt. So in short, where's my whiteboard gone? For flats. The more the better, 30 to 50 plus at least. If you're struggling, try using a computer screen or iPad or if you've got, you know, great skies, use the sky. It's important to know what your what bit cam your camera is, so and it's also very important to know whether your program is using the native bit depth or scaling it to 16 bits. So is it 12, 14 or 16 bit? Make yourself a table of different like illumination levels. So for example, you might want like 30% illuminated, 50% illuminated, 70% illuminated and the ones in between. I wouldn't go kind of like lower than 30% and I wouldn't go higher than 70% because you don't want to be clipping the data at either side. Um, and by clipping data, I mean if you were looking at a histogram, I'm just drawing it for you. So we've got 0% and 100%. You wouldn't want your peak to be off at the bottom and you wouldn't want the peak to be off at the top either. So by aiming it like here, here or here, you're kind of playing it safe. So I know that subject was kind of dry and hopefully it helps a few of you it's not the easiest thing to explain and I do struggle sometimes but um, let me know what you think down in the comments I can always redo this video and try and make it better um, but as always thanks for watching I'm still learning too so you know feel free to pick holes and I'll do my best to rectify things and um, see you for the next video bye for now